Hello and welcome back to the beach. Today what we're looking at is high-low cost estimation method part three. Now I'm going to make the assumption, it's quite a big assumption, that you've had a look at parts one and two so you understand the relationship between costs, which is on my y-axis, which is the dollar sign, against quantity, which is on my x-axis, which is the Q sign. And what this now means is there is some sort of relationship in there. In part one, we looked at the simple straight line relationship. In part two, we had a look at the idea of a step in our fixed cost. And now what we're going to do in part three is we're going to look at a reduction in my variable costs. Now, there are two different types of reductions you can get in variable costs. So we're going to go through both to make sure you're totally happy with it. Now, once again, we're using oranges and apples as our illustration. So we've got a situation with oranges. Oranges normally cost $4 each, and a crate to hold them will cost $100. The total cost of a crate with 60 oranges is now going to be fixed cost plus all of my variable costs. So 60 by 4 gives me 240, plus the extra 100 gives me a total of 340. If we had 15 oranges in our crate, it now means that my total cost comes in as 100 fixed cost plus 15 by 4, variable cost gives me a total of 160. Wonderful. Now we're going to change this a little bit. So this is how it would work potentially in part one of our exercises. Now what's going to happen is we're going to say that if you purchase more than 50 oranges, you receive a discount on the purchases of your oranges of 10%. That now equates to a discount on your variable cost per unit of 10%. Now, the 10% discount that we're going to get here will be applicable to all oranges. So the purchase that we're looking at here, if it's more than 50 oranges, you get a discount of 10%. You get a 10% discount on all of your oranges. And what this now means is buying 60 oranges and putting them into a crate will now have a cost of, still a fixed cost of 100, 60 oranges multiplied by, and it's this 4 by 90%, which makes life a little bit more colourful for us, because it's that 4 multiplied by the 90%, which shows me the 10% discount across absolutely everything. So it shows me the 10% discount across absolutely everything. Now, we're still going to use this as our high equation. We've got the previous example as our low equation. And we're still going to make the big assumption that we have this type of algebraic straight line relationship. But there may now be a kink in the line. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that for 60 oranges, the total cost will be shown as 316, which we showed you before, equals fixed cost plus the variable cost of 60 oranges, but now multiplied by 90%, because you get a 10% discount. The low equation that we're going to use is going to be for 15 oranges, 160 equals A plus 15B. You've seen that before. Now we need to solve this for A and B. Now notice that B is the variable cost per unit without the discount. So B is the variable cost per unit without the discount. So what we need to do is we need to take this 60B multiplied by 90% and actually work out what that really means. Well, the 60B multiplied by 90% will now become 54B. So 60 multiplied by 90% gives me 54. I will now have 54Bs in there. And now I have my 316 and my 160 because the low equation stays exactly the same. And we can now simply solve this equation to work out that 316 minus 160 gives me 156. And that will now equal 39Bs, which gives me a value of B, which will be $4. And again, notice this. That's the price without the discount. So that's the price without the discount. That's really important to me. We can then use these figures to try and estimate what's going to happen in the future with my B of 4. We now need to find out what A is. A is going to be calculated as 160 equals A plus 15B. B is 4, that which now means that A can be calculated, as you would expect, as being $100. And there's the various different steps to get you through to A as being $100. We can now estimate future costs on that basis and hopefully have a better understanding of cost behavior. Now, that's the first way of varying my variable costs. So that's the first way of having my discount. The second way is if we only have a discount for future purchases. So in the oranges example, every single purchase got the bulk discount. However, now within the apples example, what we're going to say is it's only going to be future purchases. So there's a decrease in variable cost of 20%, but only 
for amounts in excess of 30 apples. So we only apply the discount to anything over and above the 30 apples. And what we have is actual results, which will be based on 35 apples and then five apples. And what we need to do is find a way to solve this equation to make sure that we can find out what A and B will be. So we need to find out a way of working out precisely how to determine what A and B will be. And the way that we do this is we will say that 298 equals fixed costs plus some variable costs. Now, the fixed costs will be A. The variable costs are going to be this 30B because the first 30 apples we have to pay full price for. The other five, we only have to pay 80% of the price because we get a 20% discount. So that now means that 298 equals A plus 30B plus 5 by 80% of Bs. And that now means that 298 equals A plus 34B, which suddenly makes this equation seem really simple for me to work out because that's my high equation. I then have my low equation, which is the $95 equals fixed cost plus five lots of apples. I can then solve this equation and work out that my B comes in as $7 per unit or $7 per apple. If I then plug that into my calculations of the 95 equals A plus 5B, that now means I get an overall figure for A of $60. Now, they, those two examples are quite naughty, guys. I would strongly suggest you go through those a couple of times to make sure you're completely happy with it. And then when that type of thing comes up in the real world or in exam land, hopefully you will totally nail it and have some fun with lots of marks or understanding cost behavior with a lot more detail. That's, the, that's all we've got time for today, I'm afraid, guys. Thanks ever so much. Hope you are doing well and goodbye from the beach and I'll see you all very soon.